ਕੱਧਾ ਤਿਰਗਟੇ ਤਿਰਗਟੇ ਤਾਂ ਨਾ ਦਾਗੇ ਤਿਰਗਟੇ ਦਿਨ classical schools of dance from the Indian subcontinent, Kathak is perhaps the most beautiful. Over the centuries, it's emerged as a pure creative form adding to the immense spectrum of arts, which represent a culture as complex as it is beautiful. It's been said that one needs to visit a country to see its greatest masters, but Nahid Siddiqui from Pakistan has brought her skill to Birmingham. She's one of the most celebrated dancers of Kathak, the dance whose name means storyteller. Well, it's a nice time, it must be a nice time of year to be, uh, to be dancing anyway. But I just, uh, from the school days, I was very much dancing and I was taking part in, uh, preferably, uh, dance drama or solo dance or without knowing what I was doing. Yeah. So you had no training up to that point? No, I was um, trained quite late actually. Mm. And um, then later on I just um, had to choose what I really wanted to do because my mother also insisted that I should go in some kind of art line not thinking that I'll seriously take it up or anything. Yeah. But I just, um, out of singing and out of painting, out of mm, so many other things, I chose dancing. When did you realize that there might be a career in dancing for you? Very late. Um, I was um, not performing, I was just learning because till a certain time, some years you just learn, you're yeah. not allowed to go on the stage if you're in India or Pakistan. And um, I was still learning, and um, I was offered a, a performance, you know, and um, I just um, did it in spite of all the difficulty and opposition from my father, especially. <laughs> and um, I did it, and I just, when I was on the stage, I thought it's, it's, it was a lovely feeling mm. being on the stage and um, sort of sh showing a final finished number or a finished thing to your audience. I think sometimes we often see, I think, what you call folk dances, you know, perhaps at parties and so on. Yes, yes. But uh, not yes. your specific type of dance? No, I don't think so. That is one problem uh, we face, you know, uh, when our performances take place, uh, that we have to drag people to come and at least see it once mm -hmm. so that they get some kind of idea what kind of hard work goes into it and what it is all about because it's their own culture. It, but I think the reason is they've left their own countries long ago and they've settled here and it's not, they don't get much chance to see that kind of uh, classical uh, dance. So even um, for the Asian people it comes as a surprise as well? Oh yes, totally. Yes, I've met many Asian people who um, who, who didn't even know that uh, Kathak uh, is, whether it's a name of a vegetable or <laughs> <laughs> dance style or yeah. what. But that's a mistake these young people and their parents aren't likely to make. They meet regularly with Nahid to hear stories of her homeland and to talk about dance. 
रिमझिम रिमझिम बरसे भूदनिया रिमझिम रिमझिम बरसे भूदनिया रिमझिम इज द साउंड द वे रेन ड्रॉप्स रिमझिम 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 ना यू कैन शो दैट योर हेयर स्वेट and that's another sign of the rain you can just feel the rain on your hands you can hide your face that's to show uh, the rain and um, it depends on the performer's imagination uh, there are some cliched movements set movements to show rain clouds uh, lightning thunder but in addition to those cliched set uh, symbols you can add your own imagination rim jim rim jim rim jim rim jim rim jim rim jim bar understand a fine art you need a fine brain mm-hmm. and um, i think any specialized as i say again and again classical art has very few who understand or watch it mm-hmm. even in india yeah. i'm afraid that is the case so it must really have been a bit of a shock to you when you came to england uh, because i think people probably know even less about the dance and appreciate it even less here I was in the beginning very very frustrated for um, a year or so and then I had one performance through some friends mm-hmm. who were Pakistanis who knew about me yeah. and it was in the Indian Culture Center mm-hmm. that is when I was offered to teach at the Indian Culture Center yes. after that performance yes. so that was my first you can say engagement in yes. England and i was really thrilled because um, before that i had really never thought that i'll teach at this stage yes but um, i thought that is the best way to keep in touch and to keep in touch at least with the institute and with your art students i have now have been with me for some of them have been with me for two or three years mm-hmm. that's when i started to teach at yeah. the midlands arts center and um, i did not think in the beginning that they would carry on really because it is hard work and uh, even though it's only once a week for mm-hmm. an art which needs a lifetime mm-hmm. dedication but um, even then i think it's a bit asking them 
for a little too, uh, you know, for more than what uh, they would be used to in this country. It's um, stamping their feet for us. <laughs> thing they, they have to um, cope with? I think the, the relationship, the respect for dance we have, the mm. way we have learned in India or Pakistan, um, they cannot understand that living here unless they go back to India or Pakistan and see how much respect it is your religion. I mean, it becomes your way of life. It's not only an art form. Mm. You have to, it begins from, the, from taking off the shoes outside the area on which you are going to dance mm -hmm. because the shoes um, should not touch that because all the da dust and dirt is you're mm. carrying with your shoes. So that is such a holy and mm, uh, clean place. It, sh it should be left clean. The respect for the place, first of all. Mm. Then for your guru, for your teacher, mm. who then, um, guru is, comes much more later. I mean, it was, it is much more advanced stage of a teacher, mm. really, because a guru is um, um, the one who does not only teach you to dance. It's, you learn everything of life, how to, um, you know, it's the way of life you adopt, you copy your guru, mm -hmm. you know, so you, he has to be, or she has to be an example, really, mm -hmm. for you. And how do you manage that here? I mean, you're teaching your students, who's teaching you? I get every thing together, like tapes, mm -hmm. or, um, you know, videotapes and cassettes to listen to. Um, write down what I have to do for nearly a year so that I have something to work on. Now I haven't got a, someone who can judge my work over here, unfortunately. But I have to be, mm, I just keep crying and keep doing it really. <laughs> That's the only way. Three, two, one. I've converted my garage into my dance studio mm. and um, that's where I, because I feel uh, there's no interruption, no disturbance, no phone, nothing. You have to go in one corner where you can kind of meditate and you can carry on with your practice mm. where there's nobody uh, to disturb you. always believed that nothing is impossible and um, that whether I am alone or not I have to put in double the amount of work which I would have done if I was in India or Pakistan because I have to now prove to myself and to others that being here in Britain is uh, shouldn't be a hindrance um, in fact, if anything, it has improved my work. the bells are the most important um, instrument it's our instrument and the the respect for these uh, is immense we're not supposed to put them on the floor without a bag we have to have a nice bag uh, for it and um, when we wear it before that we have to just keep them 
and pray that, you know, God gives us respect in whatever we do, especially whatever uh, piece of dance we are doing. And uh, it's, uh, it's sad. The beginners usually don't wear it. They are not allowed to wear it till they um, have at least done one year of training. And then they wear only, they start with 25 in each uh, foot. And gradually, you keep increasing them because the weight helps you build up the speed. Now, at the moment, I'm wearing uh, 170 in one foot. And uh, it doesn't look nice if you wear more than that because it covers most of the part of your leg. This is tucked in. And then it goes round. You're going to have a performance very soon. First of all, you have to all check your strings, the gungroos, because um, sometimes they, in the class, you've noticed they break or they open. So just see how strong the string is, otherwise you'll have to restring them. And uh, then flowers for your hair. And uh, you've all, all got your jewelry and makeup because that's also very important. And Faranda, this? Chutla.
Nahid, can I ask you um, the importance of language in Kathak? Surya doesn't speak either um, Hindi or Urdu. How important do you feel it is that she learns the language? I think it's uh, incomplete, really, uh, without um, learning to speak our own, either Hindi or Urdu, because of the, the problem she'll face later on. If she really start, uh, thinks of taking it up seriously, then she will have to understand the wordings um, uh, of the songs, of the um, bhajans, of the tumris. She'll have to go into the depth yes. of them. And unless she knows the language, it's going to be, I'm afraid, very difficult. And it helps to, uh, for the uh, recitation of tukras also, toras, the rhythmic patterns. Mm -hmm. Like ta thai dig dig thai, ti dha dig dig thai. If you're reciting a uh, tukra or a tora or a song, you cannot sound as if you've, you're not familiar with the language. You have to be uh, really precise and good at it. So the relationship and the whole tradition and the whole way of thinking changes um, if you are steeped in that culture. The environment. Uh, is very important to help you, the inspiration. Now, if you want to know the historical background, how they used to live, where they used to live, you have nothing to go to over here. You have got temples over there to go and feel the feeling of it inside. The, uh, the quietness, the stillness might inspire you. And um, the feeling of looking at Taj Mahal, uh, it's a totally different feeling, you know. To trace the movements of the country's dance heritage, one needs to go back centuries to the days when the dancers were the handmaidens of the gods. And later, in the palaces and courts of the great empires, they held an equally respectful place as special entertainers. The word Kathak means a storyteller. Now, it goes back to thousands of years. It was a folk dance. And uh, gradually it took a shape of slightly sophisticated form, like slightly intricate. And then in the 16th and 17th century, when the Mughal emperors came in power, they brought it in the um, courts. So they, the, there was slight change in the costume also. But um, it very much remained a storytelling thing. In other words, whatever you dance, you are telling some kind of story. Before that, it was done in the temples, and the costume was different. It used to be up to the, covering the feet, and a choli, small choli. Choli is a small blouse, and uh, a long chunni or a dupatta, like this. Do you think the movements in Kathak are much nicer than they're portrayed in films? Oh, my God. <laughs> Dance in Indian films, where the ruination of all classical dance forms started. Unfortunately, the, that is one reason my father was so much against. What he saw was the film dance again. And he said, no, this, if this is dance, my daughter is not going to learn dance. And uh, the unfortunate thing is that uh, parents um, see the films, Indian films, and uh, whatever little dance, uh, whatever form they do, whatever, I don't know what they do, they see the parents uh, just are put off. And that is nowhere near um, the real classical art form, whether it's Bharatanatyam, whether it's Kathak, whether it's Urisi, whether it's Kuchipuri. It's nothing like pure dance. Would you ever appear in a film and do a dance if you were asked? Of course, I would love to. I would love to, provided it's uh, the way I want. Um, it's done the way I want, mm. provided they stick to the true traditions. 25 years ago, when my guru was a performer 
in Calcutta and when he was learning from India, from Achan Maharaj, he was um, doing things which were much simpler than what he sees today in Kathak. Simpler in the sense that they were not intricate, as intricate as now. Uh, what Kathak, the shape Kathak has taken now is very advanced in rhythm, rhythmic uh, structure, in uh, its um, expressional uh, aspect. It has gone very far. The ritual to dress up, make up, everything is very, very important. The whole, as I said, you have to be prepared, prepared for a for a, for being someone different, for a totally different character, really, mm -hmm. because you're no more uh, Nahid or whoever. Kathak was a very much um, um, chamber art. It's, yeah. It was for small gatherings, the makeup. It, it is not a theatre thing. It is not meant for theatres. Now we have brought it into theatres. You can't mm -hmm. help it because we want more people to see it. I would say before Mughal period, the importance to make up uh, face wasn't uh, given that much because there was no um, uh, lipsticks or uh, powders of this kind, but yes. beetle leaf for your, to redden your lips yes. and coal for your eyes, yes. henna for your hands, yes. just to make it more attractive. I must mention Durga Lal here because he was recently here. I had never met him before and uh, I just um, did a number with him, a little experiment which I just would not forget because um, I've never experienced such a thing. a very well-known dancer in India and a very good one too. Mm. Uh, 
and it was um, the it was like finding in this whole world one person who speaks my language <laughs> you know mm. and uh, just understood what i i didn't have to speak he didn't have to speak and we understood mm. you know so it was like um, after years finding someone who is on the same wavelength as far as Kathak is concerned. Mm. So. In that dance, um, I, I saw it. it, it looked very spontaneous. It was really seemed to be a lot of fun. Yes, it was meant to be like that mm. because it is more of a, it is very informal. Mm. And uh, because we didn't have more, enough time yeah. to do this number, to create this number, we just let it happen. Yeah. And uh, apart from one or two things which we set, Yes. Um, which you have to. You just let it happen and uh, the tabla player also mm, was, mm. you know, excellent. So he picked up what we wanted to do immediately. So it became more of a question answer, uh, of more of a dialogue. Mm. Uh, when I see my work now, I, I know that I have improved in certain areas and I know how much I have to work, uh, more I have to work. But um, um, I think if you know um, and your, you, if you have self-analysis as a dancer, if you know where you are, if you have seen the best, if you keep seeing the best, and if you keep judging yourself, and if you keep putting in work, I just don't feel any, see any reason why you can't improve all the time, wherever you are. When I was there this time in India and Pakistan, I took part in the Kathak festival, which um, I mean, I'm very proud of because that is of a very high standard and you don't take part in Kathak festival if you're not of that um, caliber or if you're even not near that caliber. So that was a great um, uh, encouragement for me to carry on for next year because I have an invitation for next year as well. How long has it taken you to get to this degree of perfection? Oh God, perfection. <laughs> I think uh, the more you go on doing it, the more you find um, it becoming difficult, really. I started in 70, 1970. How old were you at that time? Very old. <laughs> 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 I was, yes, I started very late. I was about 14, 15, which is late, really. Yes. So with our girls, if, you know, they work hard at this stage, they should be able to reach somewhere, um, maybe not at your level. No, why not? But they should be better than me. Yes, they should be.
Tagad! Tagad!